Am I wrong for not wanting to split expenses proportional to income? I live with my boyfriend in a flat he owns. Fully paid off, his father gave it to him. The whole building was built six years ago and it's in a very popular area. I pay my boyfriend half of the market rate rent, which we update every year by looking at how much the flats are being rented out for in the building complex, which is a lot of money, but I agreed to it. Other than this, we did everything else 50-50 in the past. I got a new job with significant pay increase and now my boyfriend says we should start splitting expenses proportional to income because that's fair. Ew! Drop him! Drop him! Drop him! What the heck? 50-50 is easy. That's like the right moral way to do things. Ew! He got a free flat. He got a free apartment and he's asking what's fair or not. I told him I don't think it's fair that I should start paying for more just because I got a new job and nothing else changed. I already paid him rent, enough rent that would get me a same size flat a few streets away so it's more than fair to him. He had some, in my opinion, very weak arguments and accused me of ripping him off. That's when I told him that under no circumstances we will split expenses proportional to income. Now that I've calmed down a bit, I'm worried whether I'm in the wrong, especially since my best friend told me that this is how they do it with her boyfriend too and my boyfriend owning the flat is irrelevant here. So am I the asshole? Uh, it is not a <laughs> Am I the asshole for kicking my girlfriend out of my apartment so my dad could sleep in it? My dad came to visit for a few weeks and I was so excited because I hadn't seen him in months. However, my apartment is already pretty full with my girlfriend living there who doesn't pay rent and me. We have a two bedroom apartment but my girlfriend uses the second room as a personal woman cave and prefers to sleep there most nights. The problem was that my dad had to sleep on the couch in the living room which was causing him severe back pain. My dad is 70 years old and it was also inconvenient because we couldn't watch TV late at night without disturbing him. So I asked my girlfriend if he could sleep in her room for a few days but she wasn't having it. Am I the asshole for kicking my girlfriend out of her room in my apartment so my dad could sleep in it? It was only for a few more days, but my girlfriend wasn't having it. She didn't want to give up her space and insisted that I sleep on the couch or in her room instead. But her bed was too small for me to sleep in and I needed a proper place to sleep. I got upset because I felt like she was being unreasonable. After all, she doesn't pay rent and this is my apartment. She still refused and said that I should have planned better for my dad's visit. She told me I should have booked him a hotel room and acted like I was the one being unreasonable and selfish. Eventually, I got her to let my dad stay in her room, but she's been making me feel guilty. Am I the asshole for manspreading on a plane? A few weeks ago, I-26 male was on a flight in between two women. I'm tall and never comfortable on planes. My knees always dig into the seat in front and it can be painful. I forgot to stretch my legs prior and it was even less space because it was Spirit Airlines. After half an hour after takeoff, I found my left knee inching to the side for a sweet relief of open space. Just the no man's land in between seats, but I might have been occupying some of their space. After two hours, the woman in the window seat called over the flight attendant. She said something like, could you tell him to keep his effing leg in his own effing seat? Am I the asshole for manspreading on a plane? I instantly retracted my leg in deep shame. She also made a snide reference about the idea that spreading your legs is about male down there comfort. I was shocked into silence and obviously tried to apologize. She refused to speak to me and acted like she didn't hear me. Instead, she furiously texted on her phone. The woman in the aisle seat said she had some extra space on her side that I could use but then promptly went to sleep. I tried again to apologize to window seat woman but she ignored me. I kept replaying it on why she didn't simply ask me to move my knee instead of calling the attendant. I even sneaked a peek on her phone and part of what she was writing was about me. Am I the asshole for leaving my son's wedding after he denied his stepmom the mother-son dance? Probably. Go on. My son Jordan is 27. His stepmom, Natalie, came into his life when he was 16. His mom had passed away when he was 13, never really considered Natalie as his mom, and shut down every attempt to have a close relationship. He even moved in with his aunt months after Natalie and I got married. As years went by, they started reconciling and seeing each other more 
more often. He invited us to his wedding, which took place days ago. We got there and the atmosphere was great until later I found out that Jordan had denied Natalie a mother-son dance and instead chose his aunt to dance with him. Natalie told me this minutes later and I couldn't help feel irritated and quite upset. I decided to get up and leave and we both left. I got calls from my family after they saw me leave. Jordan called later and I told him why I did it. He got mad and said it was his wedding and that his aunt was basically a mother to him and that Natalie shouldn't expect special treatment. But it's not a special treatment, but a tradition. Besides that he hurt her feelings for no reason other than for the sake of being malicious. He got offended and accused me of ruining his day and causing a scene. Now the family sided with him and said I shouldn't have left no matter what. I'm with the family. Natalie's not his mom. End of discussion. It's called a mother-son dance. Natalie's not his mom. What's not making sense here? What's not clicking in your head? This is a stepmom that came into his life when he was 16. Basically an adult. They're not close and probably had a lot of other issues, so much so that he moved in with his aunt when they got married. There's a lot going on here that OP isn't telling us and trying to play the victim of, oh, he hurt my wife on his wedding day. Ugh. God forbid. Something weird happened with my boyfriend last night, and I need your advice on whether or not this is officially the world's biggest red flag. I'm guessing it already is. <laughs> <laughs> Some background. I've been with my boyfriend, Matt, for almost a year. We met through mutual friends at a birthday party. Maybe I should have been more on guard about Matt from the very beginning, because when my mate found out we were dating... She warned me about Matt being a bit of a party boy, but I was already pretty head over heels and ignored really everything she said. Despite not being the stereotypical boyfriend type, Matt is the funniest, most attractive, endearing person I've ever met. I love him a lot, more than he loves me. If he loves me, lol, he's never oh. actually said it. <laughs> no! I said it about three months into seeing each other. Oh. But then last night happened. Matt has always told me that he's not on Snapchat. I love Snapchat and I use it to keep up to date with what my friendship group is doing. I never questioned that Matt doesn't have it. I guess it kind of is niche these days and he's a little older than me. Only last night when we were in bed together, I noticed he was trying to hide his phone from me. I feigned complete ignorance and after he let his guard down a bit, moved my head quickly to see that, yes, my suspicions were correct. He was on Snapchat. Mm. And quite clearly messaging someone on there. I asked who he was talking to and he said he didn't remember. Classic. <laughs> classic <laughs> manoeuvre. Pa party boy, smart boy, Matt. <laughs> oh, classic. He's a <laughs> I knew he was lying. I confronted him about it, and after about 10 minutes of insisting it was just his guy mate from high school, he came clean and told me he speaks to a girl on Snapchat that he met at uni years ago. I was so confused as to why he went to such great lengths to avoid just telling me that. All he could offer in reply was that he didn't want me to feel jealous. I want to trust him that it's all above board. But how can I when he's lied about something so cut and dry? When I asked him why he has told me for a year that he's not on Snapchat at all, he said he can't remember telling me that and oh, maybe again. it was a simple miscommunication. Th this memory is yeah. really escaping him. Get that checked out, man. <laughs> can't remember a lot of things at the moment. Okay. Please help a confused girl out. I haven't told anyone about this yet because I'm embarrassed. And I feel like I'll be judged for wanting to stick around. Am I wasting my time? Okay. Immediately, I'm like, Amy, he is lying blatantly and actively to you. This is all... He's like, Loki trying to gaslight her. Like, oh, this is a miscommunication on both of our parts. Like, no, Matt, this is all you. I don't like this guy. I think you should leave him. That's me being black and white. <laughs> there are no fences in sight. Uh -uh. We are not sitting on a fence. Uh -uh. No. Nuh-uh. <laughs> -uh. Am I the asshole for saying my niece can't come on vacation if she continues to have tics? Around a month ago, my niece Ashley suddenly started having loud, uncontrollable tics. 
Random outbursts of cuss words, swinging her head and making loud noises and saying mean things. According to my sister, another girl in her friend group has also started doing this and they're both claiming to have Tourette's. Ashley's pediatrician has put her in touch with a therapist, but her first appointment is after the trip. Funnily enough, I sat with Ashley through a two-hour movie and she didn't have a single tick. But they reappeared when we walked through the mall and then disappeared on the drive home when she was using her phone. And then reappeared at dinner. Am I the asshole for saying my niece can't come on vacation if she continues to have tics? I don't believe for a second that Ashley actually has Tourette's syndrome. And her parents and doctor don't either. I told Ashley that I know she's going through a hard time, but she needs to work on mitigation techniques for her tics before we go on the trip or she might not be able to come. What I said to her mom is that no way in hell am I taking Ashley through an airport, plane, and all around a theme park with her acting like that. It's embarrassing and exhausting for a few hours, let alone multiple days. Her mom thinks it's cruel, and while I do understand something is going on, I think her actions are offensive. 